You know, a lot can happen in a week. You need 218 votes to get him out of the speakership. You don't have 218 Republican votes. You're going to need Democrats. Let's start with the Republicans. How many Republicans do you have? Well, enough so that when you host this show next week, if Kevin McCarthy is still the Speaker of the House, he will be serving at the pleasure of the Democrats. One week later. The office of Speaker of the House of the United States House of Representatives is hereby declared vacant. Matt Gates said he was going to move to vacate. Kevin McCarthy said, bring it on. It got brought. And now Kevin is gone. Uh, let's get ready to rumble. You can't handle the truth. Hi, I'm Pastor Marty. This is the Afternoon Drive Weekend Edition. Glad to have you along. This is the place where you get to hear my rants, my ravings, and of course, my undeniably flawless reasonings. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Once you are, smack the bell, click the word all. That gives you notifications of every time I do one of these. And please, like and share this video. That's how we get the word out we're here. Welcome to the Afternoon Drive. In an absolutely historic move, for the first time ever, the Speaker of the House has been vacated. In other words, removed as Speaker. Now, he's not removed from Congress, and Kevin McCarthy says he's not going to resign, but he also said he is not going to run again for the seat. And of course, this is setting up, you know, who is it going to be? For a couple of days, uh, Trump's name was floated, but uh, looks like the conservatives are going to coalesce behind Representative Jim, jo Jim Jordan from Ohio, and he will be an excellent speaker. I have nothing but praise for Jim Jordan. But now let's deal with this whole week that unfolded that began on the State of the Union with Jake the Tapper when Matt Gates said he got to go and Jake said you don't have the votes and and Gates said yes I do and here we are he's gone now of course this immediately put the GOP establishment into meltdown mode some within so-called conservative media uh, like the Dan Bonginos and even, you know, of course, good old Sean Hannity, and he had on Newt Gingrich, or as I like to refer to him as Newt Gut Wrench. Four percent, four percent decided they were so morally superior, so intellectually pure, so patriotically better, that they would side with the Democrats, and that's what they did, in order to defeat the entire Republican House caucus, 96% of the Republicans voted for McCarthy. 4% voted against him. From my position as a longtime Republican activist, they're traitors. All eight of them should, in fact, be primaried. They should all be driven out of public life. What they did was to go to the other team to cause total chaos. We ought to be focusing on Biden. We ought to be focusing on the economy. No offense, Newt, because I supported your run for president over witness protection, Romney. But you're really becoming so out of touch that you really, you're starting to look like that you were hatched in Jurassic Park. Uh, you, you really don't get where the Republican base is anymore. What is the point of coming out with these talking points? We can't be fighting each other. We've got to be fighting Joe Biden. We've got to be fighting what the Biden economy has done to this country. We all agree with that. Here's the problem. When we have a so-called Republican Speaker of the House who is constantly, as soon as we bring anything to the floor that the Republicans get behind and support and it looks like it's going to pass, he is immediately cutting a backroom deal with the White House. So when we bring a budget to the floor to keep the government open, but we don't want there to be any money in there for Ukraine, what does McCarthy do? He signals to the White House, listen, the way we're going to frame this is once this passes, you can just write in the Ukraine funding and it's going to be there. So how is keeping McCarthy stopping the Biden agenda when all he does is rubber stamp? 
the Biden agenda. See, this concept of politics as usual, where you come out every four to six years, you tell the conservatives what we want to hear, and then you go and you do this, this status quo type of running the government. And enough is enough is enough. And Matt Gates and a handful of conservatives, the real conservatives, who really have their finger on the pulse of where the conservative movement, not so-called conservative Washington, which is driven by lobbyists and soft money, and these representatives are not there to represent the people, but rather the people that are putting money into their pockets. When, when Matt Gates and the conservatives in Congress, who are real conservatives, have their, their finger on the pulse of America and where America is at. We are watching the numbers go up for the Republicans right now, trusted overwhelmingly by a, a sizable double-digit lead over the Democrats on border security, on the economy. Uh, and I don't believe that what Matt Gates is doing is hurting him. It might be hurting his career in the short term in Congress with the, the political establishment. But trust me, this is why trust is growing in the Republican Party across the country. Because you have even now progressives and leftists taking a look at Matt Gates and, and what some of these conservatives are doing about holding the line against no more funding of Ukraine and, and, and the things that, that Matt Gates is proposing you are finding a vast majority of Americans getting on board with. Newt, your, your, your contract with America back in the day was cutting edge. You know why? Because you knew where Americans, not just Republicans, but Democrats, independents, non-voters, non-participants, you knew where Americans were coming from. You felt that. You, you, you understood their, their pulse and you drafted that into legislation and it became the contract with America and you forced Bill Clinton literally to do a liberal U-turn and moderate to the middle. That was phenomenal. It was incredible. And what you're missing is the fact that that's what's happening now in this status quo, just protect big government, just protect military industrial complex is not where the Republican voter is anymore. That's over. And to listen to some of these representatives go to the floor and try to defend McCarthy, but I'm sorry, Gates was ready and he brought receipts. Under Kevin's speakership that lasted 15 rounds of him never giving up, this Republican majority has exceeded all expectations. I would just say if this House of Representatives has exceeded all expectations, then we definitely need higher expectations. <laughs> okay, now you got to admit that was just funny right there and absolutely 100% true. Now, um... Uh, Gates wanted to make this case from the Republican side, but of course, the Republicans wouldn't give him a podium, so he had to go over and make the case to the American people from the Democratic side of the House. And what a case he made. To be clear, I tried to get one of the three podiums on the Republican side, and y'all wouldn't let me have them, so he sent me over here. But you know what? I'll make this argument at any desk in this building, from the well, from the chair. I'll make it on every street corner in this country that Washington must change. We have to break the cycle. We have to break the fever. And I would hope, truly, that the reforms that we are fighting for are reforms that would last and be embraced and that would democratize power in this institution beyond the privileged few who back us up against shutdown politics and, and Christmases and deadlines in order to achieve their objectives. Mr. Speaker, high inflation is on the verge of bankrupting American families. Our economy is breaking in half. A typical American family can't afford to buy a house in 99% of U.S. counties. Inflation is stealing more than $700 a month from working Americans, nearly $9,000 a year. Kevin McCarthy is the Speaker of the House of Representatives, and he has failed to take a stand where it matters. So if he won't, I will. I make no apologies for defending the right of every hardworking American to afford a decent life for themselves and their families. And we have a greater opportunity to do that and to build coalitions under new leadership. We have to rip off the Band-Aid. We have to get back on a better course. 
And Mr. Speaker, I don't know how this vote's going to go. Usually when a vote comes to this floor, it's pretty predetermined. And this one, I'm not so sure. But I am sure that we've made the right argument, that this place deserves single-subject spending bills, that we should have 72 hours to read a bill, that something that spends more than $100 million shouldn't be put on the suspension agenda such that we can't amend it, and there shouldn't be secret side deals made on a continuing resolution to lump Ukraine in with border security. That is, a, that is not right for Ukraine or border security because it fails to give either of those issues the dignity that they would require. But we can return that dignity to this House. We can get back on a better path. We can have single subject appropriations bills. We can set a budget, a budget top line. We haven't had a budget in this place since I was in high school. So let's get a budget. Let's get our act together. Let's get on with it. Let's vacate the chair and let's get a better speaker. I'll make this case anywhere. I'll make it on a street corner. I'll make it in the men's room. I'll make this anywhere that I can get people to listen because this is what the American people want. You know, a lot of times I'm, I'm kind of jaded with some of this stuff, even when I hear it from the conservative side because I think you're pandering, you're, you're, you're doing what you have to do to gain support. Uh, he is paying a political price for this and uh, I got to give a huge thumbs up to Matt Gates here. And by the way, Single item appropriation. Can you imagine actually seeing everything that the money is being appropriated to and voting on it one item at a time? You know, there was a time Republicans fought for that. It was called the line item veto. But what have we been told through the years? And of course, both the Democrats and Republican establishment players, because they're not really representative, they're players. Um, what, what is it that they love to do? Well, you know, I had to vote for this because the funding to feed children was in the same package for, you know, never-ending war. I, I had to vote for the package so I could get the money for the kids. And this is the way they each provide cover for one another. But to actually put it out there, every single item that you're going to give money to has got to be voted on individually. Boom, shakalaka, boom, shakalaka, boom. And when I hear Newt Gingrich, and when I hear Ann Inheat Coulter lament on uh, Patrick Bet David's podcast that this is just, it's, it's making us look dysfunctional. It's, it's, making the, it's giving the Democrats talking points. Who cares? I think the American people are wising up and they're beginning to figure out, look, there's a group of people up there on Capitol Hill and some of these conservatives that are willing to fight for us. That Why are we sending billions to Ukraine when we need that money right here to make lives better for people in America, that they could get health care, that, that, that they could provide and take care of their families, that we could, we could do some infrastructure work and, and really get this country rocking and rolling again like it needs to be, rather than this... this this transfer of wealth that somehow people just instinctively know this is not going to quote unquote fight Russia. This is going into the pockets of the oligarch. And I'd like to know how much of this money is being kicked back. You know, these politicians that vote for it. I was talking to somebody the other day and they're hundred percent right. I don't, I don't really care what kind of money these politicians had coming into office. Remember a few years ago, we got to see Donald Trump's tax returns. We got to see his tax returns. I don't care how a billionaire land developer made his money. But I do care how a career politician like a Nancy Pelosi goes into office with a couple million dollars to her name. And when she leaves office, she will have about $300 million in the bank. Now, how do you, on a congressional income of about $150,000, $175,000 a year, how do you leave with that kind of bank? Bump, ba -dum, bump. And it isn't just her insider trading that she's got going for her, but the things that Kevin McCarthy wants to do here. He is even willing to say, okay, you think that we vacated the chair too easily and you want to make it a little bit harder so that the Democrats don't keep doing this every three months? I'll give you that. But let's let's put some something in here. Let's 12-year term limit, and then you're done. Boom. How about while you're a member of Congress, you can't trade in the stock market? Boom. But of course, that's not going to fly. That's not going to pass because this is how these people make their money. And Matt Gates, like a Donald Trump, has interrupted their money and their kickbacks. But everything that he's fighting for, you leftist, you're supposed to be for. Where, where's your support on this? Hey, progressives, where's your support on this? So kudos to, to Matt Gates. What a great, great job.
And then, of course, immediately his detractors jump in and say, from the moment he went on Jake Tapper, he started talking about that he needs money to fight, that this is all a grift, this is all about getting money. And again, Matt Gates brought the receipts. And when it comes to how those raise money, I take no lecture on asking patriotic Americans to weigh in and contribute to this fight from those who would grovel and bend knee for the lobbyists and special interests who own our leadership, who have, oh, boo all you want, who have hollowed out this town and have borrowed against the future of our future generations. I'll be happy to fund my political operation through the work of hardworking Americans, 10 and 20 and $30 at a time. And you all keep showing up at the lobbyist fundraisers and see how that goes for you. I reserve. Oh, gotta love it. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. That is the cherry on the Sunday. And that's where we're going to leave this commentary today because Matt Gates had the drop mic moment. Oh, boo all you want.